One of the key supporters of the attempt to overthrow the 2020 election, Congressman Jim Jordan, has said he'll refuse to cooperate with the January 6th investigation just days after fellow pro-coup Republican Ted Cruz went on Fox News to debase himself after calling January 6th a terrorist attack. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Well, here we are again, doing a show outside our studio due to the world being, as Winston Churchill once called it, a giant eating cluster. He had some bad days. Today, we are in our fifth remote location since the pandemic began. And not to toot our own horn, but I think this one looks the best yet. And not to untoot that same horn, that is a terrible development. It's not good that we're getting better at doing our show outside the studio because a virus is running rampant. Someone told you, I'm getting very good at killing and cooking my own squirrel. You wouldn't think that person had hit it big. Although, you know, what the do I know? Maybe next week Fox News will start promoting squirrel meat as the new COVID cure-all. On that note, uh, when I tested positive, I tried to get my hands on some of that horse paste, but they were out of it, my local feed store. So the best I could do uh, was this, some horse pudding. There's no medicinal value in it. Not a great snack either. You can definitely, you can definitely taste the horse. What flavor is it? Chocolatariat. Go ahead, Grown. I can't hear you from home. Speaking of groaning from home, I was thankfully symptom-free, but we did have to self-isolate with our family all last week. The first couple of days were rough, but then on day five, I thought, you know what? This time with my children has been a blessing. At which point I realized the virus had infected my brain. I do attribute my lack of symptoms to the fact that I was vaccinated and boosted because it was definitely not my natural physical constitution. I mean, look at me. I have the immune system of an inbred British king. I once got pneumonia from looking at a snow globe. Anyway, we've now done this show in so many different locations. People are starting to think I'm in the witness protection program, especially since I took the stand in that mafia trial. I mean, I didn't actually see anything. I just thought trial would be a good chance to use my Pacino impression. I was not at the scene of the crime because I was too busy filming my show in a Zoom room. Oh, yeah. You know, I thought it would be weird doing the Pacino without the standing ovation from the audience, but it was fine. It was exactly as rewarding. Look, I swear, I swear to God, I'm gonna talk about the news soon, but one final piece of housekeeping. The most popular slash most reviled part of my quarantine shows was the talking sea captain painting. Now, I'm not currently in my in-laws home. I have no idea whose apartment this is. I'm not currently in my in-laws home where that painting resides, but have I got a story for you. A few months ago, I'm doing a Q&A with my studio audience and this lovely woman named Mary Lagarde says she's an artist who wants to make me my own painting of the sea captain in case I do at-home shows again, to which I said, I'm not doing at-home shows again, you buffoon. Happily, just in my head, not out loud because, you know, you know. Even better, Mary said she wanted to paint the captain's wife too and asked who I thought the captain's wife should be based on. And well, I'm not upset with my choice. <laughs> Ye chose well, old friend. I hereby forgive any ill will I've had towards ye in the past. Oh man, I'm just so glad you're happy. What kind of things do you do together? Well, we both love treasure, be it rubies, emeralds, or diamonds. That's great. Well, I'm on page five and I haven't addressed current events. So you know what? I'm gonna get back to, well, that's right. I'm gonna get back to work. Now, I had a terrible week, but the one silver lining is at no point during the week was I Ted Cruz. Hey, Seth. Yep, bud. Weird question, but uh, you know how you text me my closer look lines and then I record them on my phone and send them back to you? I do, yes. Are you also doing that with Rihanna? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, because it seems like hers are maybe just pulled from songs. No, 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 no. Okay, sorry I asked. Hey, don't you give it a second thought. Now, where was I? Mm, all right, Ted Cruz. Anyways, as you probably see, the big news in politics while I've been away has been the sight of the United States Senator going on TV to humiliate himself and beg for forgiveness for the grave sin of condemning a violent insurrection aimed at overthrowing American democracy. It was so pathetic. I honestly thought I was delirious from the COVID, but it turns out it was real. And I was just delirious from uh, my horse pudding. And look, we all know Ted Cruz has a thing 
for self-humiliation. He slinked back from Cancun after escaping a blackout in his state. He endorsed Donald Trump after Trump insulted his wife and his father and took that infamous photo where he made campaign calls for Trump looking like Jack Lemmon and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And he keeps showing up in public with that facial hair looking like a Chewbacca who shaved everything but the beard. You see, Cruz originally said what you might think was a totally non-controversial thing about the anniversary of the January 6th insurrection. We are approaching a solemn anniversary this week, uh, and it is an anniversary of a violent terrorist attack on the Capitol, where we saw the men and women of law enforcement demonstrate incredible courage, incredible bravery, uh, risk their lives uh, to defend the men and women who serve in this Capitol. I mean, it's the right thing to say, even though it's definitely a little weird to condemn an attack you helped whip up by spreading the very lies that fueled that mom. It's like when OJ promised to find the real killer, except in Cruz's case, it's arguably worse because he's doing it at the scene of the crime. Imagine if OJ had gone back to the house to look for the clues. Whoa, who left these gloves here? These are supposed to go in the armoire, guys. They shrink if you leave them outside. But the actual language Cruz used was pretty standard fare. In fact, it's the bare minimum, he should have said. If anything, the only part that was surprising about it was that it was a fairly normal thing from a guy who was anything but normal. On top of being one of the most disliked politicians on the planet, he's also one of the weirdest. Dude posed with a butter cow, dug into some queso on camera, and appeared to eat a booger on stage during a live national debate like he was trying to win money on some weird Japanese game show. Anyway, the point is, even that bare minimum, condemnation of the January 6th attack was apparently too much for the new enforcers of Republican orthodoxy like Tucker Carlson. For them, no criticism of what happened on January 6th is allowed. And their new litmus test is that the attempted coup was a good thing. So Cruz had to go on Tucker's show to grovel and debase himself and say that he didn't actually mean to condemn the violent insurrection he helped foment on January 6th. You called this a terror attack when by no definition was it a terror attack. That's a lie. You told that lie on purpose, and I'm wondering why you did. Well, Tucker, thank you for having me on. When you aired your episode last night, I, I sent you a text shortly thereafter and said, listen, I'd like to go on because uh, the way I phrased things yesterday, it, it was sloppy and, and it was frankly dumb. And, I don't and buy that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't buy that. For, look, I've known you a long time since before you went to the Senate. I do not believe that you used that accidentally. I just don't. It's, so, Tucker, as a result of my sloppy phrasing, it's caused a lot of people to misunderstand what I meant. The reason the phrasing was sloppy is I have talked dozens, if not hundreds of times, I've drawn a distinction. I wasn't saying that the thousands of peaceful protesters supporting Donald Trump are somehow terrorists. I wasn't saying the millions of, of, of patriots across the country supporting President Trump are terrorists. And that's what a lot of people have misunderstood well, that comment. Wait a I second, focused, but even you, yeah. wait, but hold on. What you just said doesn't make sense. Tucker, I agree with you. It was a mistake to say that yesterday. Wow, I knew Ted had a thing for self-humiliation, but that is next level. Imagine begging for forgiveness from a cable news host while he sits there with that look he always has on his face, like he's trying to remember the name of the other guy from Wham. Was it the talented Mr. Ripley? That clip was like watching one of those dumb cable news segments where a reporter willingly gets tasered just to show everyone how bad it is. I'm about to receive 50,000 volts of electricity. Do it. Oh, I, I, uh, oh. Oh. It hurts. Or it was like watching one of those jackass clips where someone has to glue their ass cheeks together or get smacked by a giant hand. What's up, dude? Yeah, dude, help us crowd, brother. <laughs> and those two clips are from our new segment, Simpler Times. By the way, Simpler Times now refers to any time before noon today. That performance was so embarrassing. Cruz even got mocked by the graphic under him as he was talking, which said cruising for a bruising. How much more humiliating can it get? That'd be like if my staff started putting up graphics below me while I was talking without my permission, which could never happen because I see every graphic before it airs on this show. I also like how Cruz finds a way to mention in that clip that he texted Tucker like they're good pals. Unfortunately for Ted, anytime he tries to text or call someone, it comes up as spam likely, or in his case, likely made of spam. And yet this debacle keeps getting worse for Cruz because he proudly tweeted out the clip of himself groveling which is a little like posting a video of yourself landing nards first on a handrail during a skateboard fail with the caption, check out how epic this is. But this is the core of modern GOP politics. You have to prove to the base 
that you have no dignity, that you're willing to humiliate yourself for them, and that there's nothing too pathetic for you to do in order to win their favor. That's why they all slinked back to Trump after he brutally mocked and insulted all of them. Because reverence and loyalty to Trump above all else is the litmus test for GOP politics. That's also why key figures in the attempted coup are now refusing to cooperate with the investigation into what happened on that day, like Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, who announced that he won't cooperate with the committee despite repeatedly insisting he had, quote, nothing to hide. Although it certainly seems like he did have something to hide, given this incredibly cagey interview he did a while back with a reporter who asked him if he talked to President Trump on the day of the insurrection. Yes or no, did you speak with President Trump on January 6th? Yeah, I mean, I speak. I, I spoke with the president last week. I speak with the president all the time. I spoke with him on January 6th. I mean, I talk with President Trump all the time. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of amazed sometimes if people keep asking this, but of course, I talk with the president all the time. I talk with him, like I said, I talked with him last week. On January 6th, did you speak with him before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked? Uh, I'd have to go. I, 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 I spoke with him that day after, I think after. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, I just don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back and. I, I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know uh, th that when when those conversations happened. But but gotta go back. I gotta go back. I gotta go. But but I mean, I gotta go back. I gotta go back. Better 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 go back. <laughs> those are straight straightforward questions, and he melted down like a Coen Brothers villain. If a cop interrogated someone and they started talking like that, they'd open the door and shout, yep, yeah, never mind. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to do a good cop, bad cop today. This guy's basically, basically admitted. Yeah, no, I, I know you had a whole routine all set up and ready to go, but uh, he's confessed. So I don't think we, I'm sorry, but my partner has been working on a, on a bad cop. It's, uh, it's Pacino. And uh, he just really liked to come in here and do it. Do you mind? Thank you. It means well to him. Okay. He agreed. You can come on in. Whoa, Jim Jordan, as I live and breathe, we have got you by the short sleeves. The point is, the point, there is nothing too humiliating or pathetic for these guys. All that matters to them is serving Trump and the GOP's authoritarian assault on democracy. And they'll embarrass themselves as much as they have to in order to do it. And I'm saying that as a guy who ate horse pudding and talks to a sea captain painting, I'm now in my fifth remote location, but hey, at least I'm not back in my in-laws house or upstairs with the wasps and the thorn birds in my- America! This has been a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.